Not a matter of if, but when. And when it happens, it could spell the end of life as we know it. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at current fireball activity. And what it's telling us is that when could be a little sooner than later. Looking out into the vastness of the universe, the greatest mystery is right here. Right under our feet. The ultimate aim of all science to penetrate the unknown. These are the stories that will make you say, What the fuck? In Science 13, we looked at an alarming trend for fireballs. And frankly, that trend is continuing. We're going to show that with our update in this program. But first, I want to take a moment to talk about the article J.P. Jones published in 2015. In April 2015, J.P. Jones and I chose two data sets, Earthquakes and Fireballs, to reevaluate the Mayan calendar. Our findings were published in May 2015 in an article titled, Were the Mayans Using Anunnaki Knowledge? Since then, our focus has been on fireballs as the harbingers of bigger things to come, given that a major impact event can have dire global consequences. Both the earthquakes and fireballs datasets presented in our May 2015 article show dramatic and troubling upticks in the number of post-December 21, 2012 events. Here you see the monthly fireball trends for the years 2011, 2012, and 2013. Our data source for fireball sightings is the American Meteor Society website. The AMS was founded in 1911. To learn more about them, visit amsmeteors.org. In Science Number 13, we presented trends for fireballs through November 2016. In this installment of our Science series, we'll show the following fireball data sets for the period November 2016 through February 2017. Monthly total fireballs, multi-state fireballs, and huge event fireballs. So let's begin with monthly total fireballs. We begin with the data set for monthly total fireballs for November 2016, as reported in signs number 13. Let's pause for a moment just to study the color code here because we use this scheme throughout our data set. 2013 is shown in yellow, 2014 in blue, 2015 in red, and 2016 in brown. Now let's look at the most current data. Here we see that the AMS monthly total fireballs for December 2016 is clearly the highest level for the past four years. This uptick is seen again in January of this year. Please note that 2017 data is shown in black. What is clearly obvious is that January 2017 has the highest level of fireball sightings than the same month for the previous four years. Here we see the month February 2017 and there's just a very slight dip over the same month last year. Not enough to be statistically relevant. Now let's take a look at multi-state fireball sightings. Multi-state fireballs, as the name implies, are reported by observers in multiple states, provinces, or even across national boundaries in one or more countries. As we can see here, the trend for multi-state fireballs is for the most part consistent with the total number of fireballs per month we saw previously. What we find noteworthy here is that November 2015 and 2016 represent the two highest periods in this slide for the years 2013 through November 2016. Then in December 2016, we see a substantial increase over the same month for the previous three years. However, in January of this year, the number of multi-state fireballs dropped slightly to the same level as January 2014. However, in February 2014, we see a resumption of this relentless uptick pattern because February 2017 evidenced 
the highest level of fireball sightings than the same month for the previous four years. With that, let's see if the same trend appears with huge event fireballs. When a fireball has been reported by over 100 observers, it is large enough to be classified as a huge event fireball. Here we see that the number of huge event fireballs for 2016 are cumulatively higher than the previous three years. But interestingly enough, in December 2016, the number of huge event fireballs is significantly less. Then, as we move into January 2017, we see that the number of huge event fireballs is at the third highest level for this same month for the previous four years. Interestingly enough, as of the month of February, we see the number of huge events dropping back down to the same level as the previous month. However, when we compare this with the number of all huge event fireballs for all months and all years, we begin to see an average baseline of two events per month. But to put this in perspective, let's take a look at a historical analysis. This simple bar chart shows us the total number of fireballs reported each year for the period January 2016 to December 2016. And this chart is visually striking. In 2009, we're looking at approximately 600 observation reports for the year. And that is the complete year. But when we look at 2016, we see approximately 5,300 fireball reports for all 12 months of that year. In other words, when we compare 2009 to 2016, we see an increase of approximately 883% in the total fireballs reported each month. Now let's see what happens when we factor in January 2017. Once again, the simple bar chart is visually striking. In 2009, we're looking at approximately 600 observation reports for all 12 months of that year. And for the single month of January 2017, we're seeing approximately 300 observation reports. In other words, that January 2017, and mind you, that's just one month, there were half as many observation reports as there were for the entire 12 months of 2009. So what happened for the year 2017 as of the month of February? The number of observation reports doubled. In other words, there were the same number of observation reports for the first two months of 2017 as there were for the entire 12 months of 2009. That is 100% of all of 2009 in just the first two months of 2017. And this brings us all the way back to the question, was the Mayan prophecy for 2012 a harbinger? And if so, is that harbinger coming to pass as JP Jones of Yauza.com maintains in his May 2015 article titled, Were the Mayans Using Anunnaki Knowledge? As we saw previously, the upward trend for monthly fireball observation reports from January 2009 to December 2012 shows a steady increase. One that gives us a simple message. That December 21, 2012 was not a non-event as naysayers maintain, but rather that it was the day when a celestial harbinger alignment occurred as per the Mayan prophecy. And if you have any doubts about that, let's take a look at huge events since December 21, 2012.
Here we see the chart with approximately six huge fireball events in 2012. And as we saw earlier, a huge fireball event is one where there are over 100 observation reports. Here we see a line chart for the period January 2012 through to December 2016. What this historical analysis shows is the difference between the total number of huge fireball events for the years 2012 and 2016. When the two years are compared, we see an overall increase of approximately 533%. Ladies and gentlemen, what you've just seen is empirical data, hard scientific evidence you can take to the bank. And it tells us that the risk has never been higher for a major impact event, one that could end life as we know it on this planet. This is why I'm deeply concerned by new asteroid research information that has just come to light. On the 19th of February of this year, three prominent UK scientists, Clemens Rumpf, Hugh Lewis, and Peter Atkinson, published a paper titled Population Vulnerability Models for Asteroid Impact Risk Assessment. In the abstract on page 2, they identified the following seven lethal effects strong winds, overpressure, shock wave, thermal radiation, seismic shaking, ejecta, deposition, cratering, and tsunamis. Of the seven, the one that really caught my eye was overpressure shock wave, and here's what I found. On page 7 under the heading high winds and overpressure, they say, during an airburst or impact, the asteroid deposits its energy in an explosion like a vent that produces an aerodynamic shock wave resulting in a tornado-like wind gust and overpressure peak. So, what does that mean to us humans? On page 8, they describe the lethal aspects. With overpressure, the danger for human beings is damage to our internal organs. With wind comes the dangers of dislocation of bodies or objects. Let's keep in mind what happened on February 15, 2013 when the Chelyabinsk meteor detonated in the skies over Russia. As a result of that detonation, overpressure and winds injured 1,500 people and damaged 7,200 buildings. Why? Because when the Chelyabinsk meteor detonated, it released as much energy as 30 Hiroshima atomic bombs and was 30 times brighter than the Sun. It is why I call it a 30-30 event. Simply put folks, if this ever-increasing fireball trend that began building after December 21, 2012 does not abate, the chance of a major impact event will be higher than ever. When it does happen, there's not going to be any time for crossing that bridge when you come to it. Rather, you'll be alive on one side of the bridge or dead on the other. And I'll leave it on that note. So until the next time we meet, remember Marshall's motto. Destiny comes to those who listen and fate finds the rest. So learn what you can learn, do what you can do, and never give up hope. This is Marshall, and I'll catch you on the backside. NASA tells us that a major impact event is not a matter of if, but when. And when it happens, it could spell the end of life as we know it. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at current fireball activity. And what it's telling us is that when could be a little sooner than later. Looking out into the vastness of the universe, the greatest mystery is right here. Right under our feet. The ultimate aim of all science to penetrate the unknown. They 
These are the stories that will make you say, what the fuck? In Science 13, we looked at an alarming trend for fireballs. And frankly, that trend is continuing. We're going to show that with our update in this program. But first, I want to take a moment to talk about the article J.P. Jones published in 2015. In April 2015, J.P. Jones and I chose two data sets, Earthquakes and Fireballs, to reevaluate the Mayan calendar. Our findings were published in May 2015 in an article titled, Were the Mayans Using Anunnaki Knowledge? Since then, our focus has been on fireballs as the harbingers of bigger things to come, given that a major impact event can have dire global consequences. Both the earthquakes and fireballs datasets presented in our May 2015 article show dramatic and troubling upticks in the number of post-December 21, 2012 events. Here you see the monthly fireball trends for the years 2011, 2012, and 2013. Our data source for fireball sightings is the American Meteor Society website. The AMS was founded in 1911. To learn more about them, visit amsmeteors.org. In Science Number 13, we presented trends for fireballs through November 2016. In this installment,